the R word. Claimed by many, but achieved by few. The exalted holy grail of business known as revenue. But what exactly does that word mean in the context of DeFi and crypto? In TradFi, the standard is GAAP, or Generally Accepted Accounting Principles. This is a collection of accounting standards for accurate reporting of revenue and expenses. For crypto to go truly mainstream, we need a version of GAAP or some industry standard of the sort for full disclosures and reporting. What I'm talking about here, here's an example. An intrepid reader subscribes to our flywheel substack for 10 years, paying the subscription fees all up front. Now, should we immediately book all the revenue in year one? Or is it better to book the revenue yearly, quarterly, or monthly? What if the reader cancels eight years and eight months into the subscription? These are great questions. The whole point of standardized reporting is to prevent any miscommunication and ensure full disclosure so that investors can make an informed decision. In DeFi, there are several projects with seemingly clean cut revenue models, but on a closer analysis, it's not so simple. Let's use a simple metric that's commonly used in TradFi, price to sales. Price to sales is important because when you buy a share of a company, you're buying a permanent piece of the profits of that company for perpetuity. Based on the company's revenues, you can use the share price to determine whether the company is overvalued or undervalued. Tokens aren't equities, but DeFi protocols share a lot of the same characteristics and revenue as their TradFi counterparts. For example, the decentralized exchange Curve Finance earns all of its revenue from a four basis point fee it charges on all trades. This is then distributed 50-50 between liquidity providers and VE stakers. So how do we properly and clearly account for Curve's revenue? There are two approaches. In approach number one, only the fees which are distributed to VE CRV is classified as revenue. In approach number two, all fees earned by Curve are classified as revenue, but the 50% fees paid to liquidity providers is considered an expense, aka cost of revenue, another fancy gap term. Liquidity providers don't have to buy CRV to earn protocol fees. They simply provide their capital to Curve to earn the yield. By paying LPs, Curve loses money that could have been paid to VECRV holders, but it's necessary to pay the LPs to retain the liquidity in the DEX. Without liquidity providers, Curve couldn't operate. So which approach should we use? Should we count all the fees collected by the protocol or just the fees paid out to token holders? We just count fees paid to token holders then we have to ask the question, who exactly are the token holders? In Curve's VECRV system, only those who locked their CRV tokens for up to four years earn revenues. Just holding CRV means nothing. So when we think about price to sales, should we use the total CRV supply, the circulating CRV supply, or the locked VECRV? There is no broadly accepted answer for this question. And this is why we need accounting standards for revenue and expenses in DeFi. It's a very complex system made even more complex by the addition of money Legos on top. For example, the money Lego on top of Curve is Convex Finance. It earns revenue from Curve liquidity providers who stake their LP tokens in Convex to leverage its enormous ECRV holdings. They do this to maximize use with no need to buy and stake their own VECRV for four years. Convex charges a 20% maximum fee to LPs for this yield boosting service. In Convex fee distribution system, there are four stakeholders. Number one, CVX CRV, which is CRV that is permanently locked in convex. Number two, staked CVX. Number three, vote lock CVX, which is like staked CVX, except it is locked for 16 weeks. Number four, 
the harvest caller, which is the address that calls the function to claim the rewards, and they are paid for this service. Each stakeholder earns a portion of the fees for their service to the protocol. Just like with Curve, there are several approaches to classifying convex revenue. In approach number one, all fees earned by the platform are revenue. This is the current method used by convex, but it overstates revenue. The fees paid to CVX CRV stakers and harvest callers are more like expenses. In approach number two, only the fees that accrue to the CVX stakers and lockers as revenue are recognized. But convex profitability is omitted, implying zero expenses, which just isn't the case. In approach number three, all CRV rewards that pass through the convex platform are recognized as revenue. CRV rewards paid out to Curve LPs CVX CRV stakers and harvest callers are expenses. I think this approach best shows revenue as it captures the completed operational state in any block. Revenue for convex is all the CRV rewards earned in aggregate. The cost of revenue is the CRV paid to curve LPs, CVX CRV stakers, and harvest callers. The remaining CRV rewards distributed to CVX stakers and lockers are protocol profits. Just like before, Curve LPs provide Convex its operating capital by lending Curve LP tokens and CRV permastate as CVX CRV. Convex requires both inputs to generate revenue. Just like with Curve, without LPs, the protocol wouldn't function. Convex revenue complexity is a function of it being a money Lego in the Curve ecosystem. Additional stakeholders raise questions about our approach, but the end result is roughly the same. So moving up again to the next money Lego, Frax. We should be able to apply the same principles as before to understand its revenue. For anyone who doesn't subscribe to our channel, we are a Frax focused media group. We cover the entire flywheel from Frax to Curve to Convex. Make sure to smash that subscribe button right now to get updates on our latest content. Now back to our discussion. Frax is a decentralized stablecoin. It has a very large treasury. In the latest version of Frax, the treasury is deployed across various protocols using automated market operations or AMOs. Frax AMOs deploy capital however it wants, so long as it does not affect the peg. As of October 13th, Frax AMOs have deployed nearly $700 million in assets that are currently earning yield. The proceeds from the AMO are compounded and used to grow further. Frax is the biggest yield farmer in all of DeFi. In TradFi land, what Frax is doing is commonplace. Circle. The issuer of USD coin receives dollars, issues USD stablecoin, then invests its custody dollars into treasuries, commercial papers, Yankee bonds, and etc. to earn yield. Circle's revenue is equal to the yield it gets from its investment. Done. Clean. On the other hand, Frax's revenue is derived from all the different AMOs generating income streams in different asset types. The largest AMO is the Curve AMO which has over $500 million in treasury assets deployed. The way that the Curve AMO works is Frax creates new stable coins and pairs it with USDC from its treasury, adding it as liquidity to Curve through Convex to earn boosted rewards. Frax's revenue model is similar, but different from Circle's. How we approach revenue is going to be totally different. Frax currently reports all Curve AMO revenue with zero expenses. Meaning by this approach, it's 100% profits. What I haven't told you yet is that Frax pays for this revenue with bribes. One of the things that Frax figured out in the last cycle was that it could increase its yield by bribing Curve and Convex voters to vote for Frax liquidity. Sam K discovered that we could pay less than a dollar in FXS to receive a dollar's worth of CRV and CVX. Frax uses Vodium bribes to maximize the amount of rewards earned for its LPs. 
Every two weeks, new bribes are paid, then revenue is earned over the following two weeks. All bribes are prepaid. So if FXS used as payment for the bribes, it should be counted as an expense. Based on this, we can derive two approaches for classifying FRAX revenue. Approach number one, all CRV and CVRX rewards are recognized as revenue with zero expenses, implying 100% profits. Approach number two, all CRV and CVX rewards are recognized as revenue and are impaired as prices change. Additionally, volume bribes are counted as expenses. Using these models, we can accurately gauge both revenues and expenses for FRAX. We actually review this once a week in our FRAX check. For the last cycle, FRAX paid $2.4 million in bribes and was able to earn $3.1 million in revenue with $690,000 as pure profit. This is super cool and revolutionary for DeFi, but there are two disadvantages for this reporting system. First, the CRV and CVX rewards are not recognized in dollar terms as it's claimed. We only review the end of the two week period right now and not block by block. Also right now, using our accounting method, FRAX operates on a two week revenue expense matching cycle. The second issue is that FRAX does not immediately realize profits on his earned CRV and CVX. Instead, they are locked for further boosting and not directly swapped for stable assets or used to buy FXS to be distributed to the VE FXS stakers. FRAX does not hedge the value of its earned rewards. So highly volatile prices leads to impairments. Much of the CRV and CVX that was earned in the last bull cycle has declined in price precipitously. It may be a long time or even never before those token values return to their original prices. Now that we've accounted for revenue in Curve, Convex, and Frax, I hope you all have a deeper understanding of some of the issues that need to be agreed upon. I think the requirements for standardized revenue reporting in DeFi are twofold. First, we must be able to correctly match revenues to expenses. Second, we must be able to account for profitability. If we can do this, and create a standardized set of accounting principles for crypto and DeFi, we will better inform investors and attract more capital. Bitcoin's potential was not taken seriously at the institutional level until many years after its launch when various groups create detailed analytics and metrics that allowed larger investors to better understand the asset class that they were thinking of allocating to. For DeFi to grow and become a multi-trillion dollar industry that we all know we can be, we need to have clear accounting, competent reporting, and full disclosures. Money speaks the language of numbers, and without a lingua franca, we won't be able to communicate DeFi's end goal effectively. I'm Capital K, and thank you for watching. But don't forget to subscribe, and let's keep the flywheel spinning. Peace.